Start your computations. Last night before I went to bed, I looked at myself in the mirror and I told myself, on Monday, you will have an amazing start to the week. You'll be really productive. You will wake up before your alarm at 7 a.m. You will go for a run. You will get all your stuff done this week. You will ace the week and you'll feel really positive and happy. And you will like yourself and you will make some amazing content. I said that all to myself before I went to bed. I woke up at 7 a.m. before my alarm. I went for a run. I've been really productive so far. So I'm gonna take that positive mindset and just think, Okay, yeah, this is what my week's gonna be like. I'm allowing it to be a positive, happy, productive week. And I'm gonna see how that takes me because honestly, I think that's the kind of outlook I need to have on life on a daily basis anyway. So welcome to a productive, positive week. kind of doing some thinking over the weekend about my content and about what kind of content I like producing, my favourite type of content to create, how I want to be in my content and the kind of person I want to project for you guys. And I was thinking about that a lot and asking myself the question of why I do what I do, what I enjoy from it, what I take from it, what I feel like I can give into it. And I kind of reached a point of assessing it and thinking, actually, do you know what? I think I can do better than what I am doing. And I think I can make this content exactly the type of content that I want to be creating and not just the content I feel I have to be creating. So I am going to be slightly adapting the style of vlogs I do and making a little bit more time to take b-roll and things like that because I love editing and yet when I come to edit these videos all I'm doing is chopping up footage of my own face speaking to camera in a different angle in my room. For you guys that might be exactly the kind of content you're looking for and that's great but wouldn't it be really interesting if over the top of it there was some b-roll of me doing the things I was talking about as I'm actually talking about them because that's the kind of thing I'm gonna look more into and in making this a bit more filmic than just a reading vlog of me talking to camera because that's how I like to make films and I think I've forgotten that and one of the things I was thinking about over the weekend was what my interests are and what my passions are because last month I read so much that it kind of made my brain explode a little bit and think actually hang on slow down what are you actually wanting from the books you're reading are you retaining what you're reading are you enjoying what you're reading I thought actually Last month I read so many books and so many pages and yet I don't really think I really intook it as much as I could have. There was a couple of the books I read such as The Poet X that very much did stick with me and I really enjoyed and I really intook them all but some of the more heavy fantasies I just they just kind of went over my head because I wasn't fancying them. So yes all right I shouldn't set TBRs but also I'm putting so much pressure on myself to read so many pages at the moment and the thing is I've hit my Goodreads goal. I read 50 books in six months I don't need to do this. I can take my time and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. But also one of the things I absolutely love is film. I went to the University of Manchester and I studied film production, which was very, very heavy on the production side, but also looked into studying film itself and understanding how to make films through watching films. And yet I don't watch films anymore. I used to watch films so, so much. We used to have a Love Film subscription, if anyone remembers what Love Film is. It's basically Netflix on DVD, but you would send your DVD back and then get another one. You'd get like two or three a month. And I used to love getting new films on Love Film because you could pretty much get anything. You didn't have to be restricted to what was or wasn't on a streaming service. And it kind of occurred to me that I'm not really watching that many films anymore. And what I am watching is more of a rewatch, something that I'm watching with my sister and she's watching it for the first time. And I'm thinking, well, why am I doing this to myself? So I want to be able to fall back more into the passions that I had years ago that I feel like I've got lost in because all I do is create content and that is all my brain is wired to do. All I do when I'm at work is create content because I'm a social media executive. And then when I'm not working, I'm creating more content. So ultimately my brain is just this big content blob. And then I read, which is fine, but also I feel like I'm reading to then be able to create more content. So. I'm gonna start integrating some of my original interests into my daily life. Last week I played quite a lot of Call of Duty on my Xbox. I'm going to watch more films, I'm going to watch more TV programs, and I'm going to consume people's art in the way that I haven't been consuming it for so long. And I'm also gonna make content for you guys that reflects that. 
a little bit more because I don't just have to talk about books. I'm talking about this like it's some big revelationary thing but I don't need to just make every single video about books. I posted a video at the weekend about Instagram tips and all right it didn't get as many views as my book videos and I've got one coming up this weekend that will be live by the time you're watching this about TV show recommendations. Just stuff like that that I enjoy watching I'm gonna make more of. So basically this is a really long convoluted way of saying welcome to Monday, welcome to a new reading vlog but also welcome to me I wouldn't say putting in more effort to my content because if you know me you will know pretty much all I do is put effort into my content but putting a different type of effort into it I suppose so new graphics as you'll have seen from the last vlog and from some of this vlog I'm now drawing all my graphics and my thumbnails because I think it makes it more personal and it also lets me use that side of my brain a bit more more b-roll and hopefully me talking about things that aren't just me rambling about using the word basically too much which I've noticed I basically use so much but you know giving you guys a bit more of a direct conversation where I know exactly what I want to tell you about the book I'm reading and I'm not just waffling because when I look back at my editing all I do is waffle. This is six minutes long so I'm probably just waffling. I'm gonna stop filming now but here's a very long introduction to this week's reading vlog. I think I found a new place that I actually like sitting when filming my videos because I can lean against these and not have to worry about my back hurting me and I can use both my ring light and my tripod to actually make a setup that works because I've been using my ring light as a tripod recently which it, it doesn't bend the right way. Anyway, it's a work in progress. Hi, it is Monday evening, late afternoon, sometime of day, but I wanted to come by to chat with you guys about a film I watched recently called Tolkien, which is very shockingly about J.R.R. Tolkien, the writer of Lord of the Rings. This film stars Nicholas Holt and Lily Collins, and it's basically about his younger years up until he goes into the war and starts really forming his ideas for Lord of the Rings. And my God, I had, I really wanted to see this film in the cinema and I had heard that it was a bit disappointing and it wasn't that great so I thought okay right fine I'll, I'll wait until it comes out on Sky. So I did that and it came out a couple months ago and I have been neglecting to watch as many films as I should be doing so I thought no I'm gonna watch it so I gave it a watch. I cried. <laughs> it's really good. It's just done so well. It talks about the beauty of words and how Tolkien had this love and adoration for the arts and for the beauty of words and his group of school friends and how they all loved arts and poetry and art and music and writing and it was just it felt very much like a celebration of passion but it also was so cleverly integrating in the fact that Tolkien was creating his own language and the heroes and the heroines and the fact that women had to be involved in things and dragons and magic and wizards and hobbits and it made me feel very happy. I adore the Lord of the Rings series very very deeply. I think it's an absolutely fantastic world. Last night in fact we actually for the first time showed Ava um, Lord of the Rings and the Fellowship of the Ring so we showed her that for the first time and she really enjoyed it and really wants to watch the other ones she had a lot of questions but I discovered those films when they very first came out and absolutely loved them I have read the first book and I've read some of the other side books such as Reverandum which are like little side ones that Tolkien wrote as well and I do need to continue all of it it is the, the books they're a lot as most people that have read them will know but my god the world that Tolkien creates but this film I just thought it portrayed beautifully his passion for his art and his words and the trauma that he experienced in his life and how that contributed to this amazing world that he created that we all know and love to be so immersive and fantastical. So I very much enjoyed the film and I would highly recommend it and I don't think enough people are talking about it so there's an underrated film for you if you needed any recommendations. I have spent a majority of my Tuesday afternoon whilst working sitting refreshing my emails because I was waiting for my fairy leap email to come through for the blood and honey box which is the special edition sequel to Serpent and Dove which I read last year and absolutely adored and it was fantastic and it's just brilliant and blood and honey is the sequel and it comes in bright red I'll put like a picture of the cover here but mm, that's, that is one sexy cover for a book I just don't have enough striking red books I just glanced over at my red shelf of the rainbow section but Okay, I'll revise that. I don't have enough striking red hardback copies of books and this one, shiny, like, mm, 
Mm. So the Fairy Loot Edition matches this one in the sense of the style and obviously it is red and I'm so excited but yeah I just managed to bag in my order for that which is really exciting because it also means I can go and eat my lunch now. I'm gonna have a really classy beans on toast but it is it's 2 30 and I have been waiting for that email to come from one till now so I yeah I ran to the toilet very quickly before it came and now I'm gonna have my lunch and then I'm gonna go for a walk. I start my day with yoga which is great apparently because I went for a run yesterday and did yoga this morning so I'm trying to be a bit more energetic and exercise productive because I need to for the sake of my back <laughs> because I need to strengthen my muscles a bit more for my scoliosis to not hurt me as much as it does. Also got a couple of other things in the pipeline that I'm not telling you about yet in case they don't happen in which case I'll look like a tit but soon hopefully it will happen and then I can tell you how, how very ominous and exciting anyway I'm gonna go and eat my beans and toast right now and uh, think about the beauty that is this book series I'm so excited I will catch up with you guys a little bit later also I realize I haven't actually told you what I'm currently reading still which is A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik this is an advanced reader copy on NetGalley so the formatting is a little bit odd on it but this from what I can tell from about halfway through and I say I can tell because I feel like it's still establishing the story but it's about kids that go to this school for magicians, wizard type beings but like they're they're running their magic through different power sources to magish, magish, magicians that we would know like what am I even saying? Basically <laughs> it's not like Harry Potter where you've got a wand and you do some magic it's like you're actually draining yourself of power and energy and there are these monsters that are in the school there's no teachers the monsters can strike you at any point they can be hiding under the library floor and by bookshelves and in the cafeteria and it just sounds really stressful time like a really stressful time but I'm really enjoying it it's fun and it's easy to fall into however the formatting is a little bit off in the book which is making it a little bit jarred in reading because it's a net galley arc it's not properly finished yet but I'm also just finding that it's taking forever to actually get going like we're going somewhere I just don't quite know where it is but I am really liking it and the way that this is very different something I'm reading about that I have not read anything about before it just sounds immensely stressful immensely stressful I'm gonna go now I'm gonna do all the, the lunch and things and catch up with you guys in a little bit really struggling to get a light balance right with my ring light it's really dark outside and yet my ring light just makes me just look like I'm under a spotlight which I know is the point but also <laughs> it doesn't look very natural lighting I need to work on that but also maybe the sun could just come out Beth's vlogs for the past three weeks have just been her asking for the sun to come out it's raining <laughs> oh no anyway hi it's wednesday we're halfway through the week i've got two days left at work before i have a week off i've just finished work for the day today i started the day by taking my car in for its service nice and early got up pretty early in the morning to do that then i wash my bed sheets which is always a really laborious task but also so rewarding when you get to get in nice cozy bed sheets so i might have a bath tonight and get in them I'm really struggling with falling asleep at the moment because I've got so much going on in my head that I'm doing and that's planning and that's coming up. Both like content, life, work, books, so many things that my brain is not shutting down in the evenings. So like I'll put my light out at like 11 and then at one I'll still be awake thinking about all the stuff that I've got to do. So I've been making lists, I've been relaxing and trying to do more calming things before I go to bed, but it don't work. <laughs> So I need to sort that out. Also, ah, oh, I've not shown you my shrimp plant. I got a shrimp plant. Are you ready? You ready? This is Shrimp the Shrimp Plant, creatively named. The story behind shrimp is that when my mum went to university, she bought a shrimp plant in her first year. So she was 18, she bought a shrimp plant for herself. Ta-da, shrimp plant. And when I went to uni, she told me this story and I really wanted to get a shrimp plant. And we just couldn't find any anywhere. We looked in many garden centers. Every time we went in one, we just could not find a shrimp plant. And it's always been like this unachievable plant to find. And over the years, I've gradually become more and more obsessed with plants. There's a few of them in my room, just a couple. <laughs> and yeah, it's it's fine. I love having plants around. And basically this, this plant has always been like the high achievement of plants and we've never been able to find one. And then yesterday my mum knocked on my door and was like, by the way, I've got you an early birthday present because you, you need it now, otherwise it won't live. I was like, what? And she bought me a shrimp plant, she found a shrimp plant. So this basically, I didn't really finish telling my story, but 
because my mum had this at uni with her and then she had it when I was a little kid, it's in the background of some of my photos when I'm a little kid. I'll put one here, but it's in the background on the left of this image and it's huge there. So the fact that this is going to turn into that is quite big, <laughs> but I'm just so excited. I'm a plant mum to a shrimp plant. Yay! I've just noticed that the whole way through me filming this, you can see my ring light in the background. <laughs> Fail vlogging. Let me block it with my head. There we go. Is that a better shot? Okay. I'm gonna go pick my car up from its service and um, do some other stuff. I've completely forgotten anything I have to do. I have to exercise. I have to do some form of exercise and go for like a mile or two walk slash run today. So woo, gonna do that. And then tomorrow, do you know what I'm doing tomorrow guys? I've just moved. No, I'm just, oh God, it's really annoying me. Tomorrow I'm getting my hair cut and dyed. First time in four months. I'm so excited. Right, I'm gonna go get my car. Bye. Okay, I picked up my car. I went through a car wash, thrilling, and then went for a very wet dog walk and now my jeans are wet <laughs> because it was very rainy. So yeah, but I did get some book mail. I'm actually gonna wait to open this for my birthday because what I did was I set up a wish list sharing thing on Twitter where you get people to share their wish list and you send them books and they send out books to other people on the wish list. Um, well, on the thread. And it's just a nice way of sharing books with other book lovers that doesn't come to too much because you're just buying one other person a book. So I bought a couple of people books and said that I would like to do it for my birthday to get people to share their wish lists. So loads of people shared their wish lists. I've got a couple of people books from them and I assume these are from the wish list sharing. So I'm going to open these on my birthday next week, which is exciting. So you'll get a birthday vlog next week, woo, where I shall open some book mail. Today is the day I get my hair cut. Yes, I'm so excited. It's, the dye has slowly seeped lower and lower down my head. It's meant to be like a copper balayage, but it's now just like from here. So we're gonna have that raised and a little bit just taken off the length to freshen it up a bit. But I, I'm, I'm not like, too tortured with it for the fact that I've not had it cut for four or five months and I usually get it cut every two and a half months so we're okay we're okay I'm excited though it's like a little pamper session although I don't know what to expect from the hairdressers I think there's like full PPE equipment in use of them and then I have to wear a mask so I don't quite know how it works with like the hair washing or the fact that you usually get quite a nice head massage and things like that I don't know if that will be a much quicker process I don't know, but I do know that I'm gonna sit and read a bit more of a deadly, dead, a uh, dead. Why can't I ever say the book title? A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. I am just over halfway through. I don't know why it's taking me so long to read this book, but honestly, it's just feeling like it's taking so long to get going. I am enjoying it in the sense of like I like the magic weirdness of it, like the fact that there are monsters to destroy, but it does very much feel like a setup book. I think this must be the first one in a series rather than a standalone, I'm not I, entirely sure, but it definitely feels like it's just completely taking time to set up the story rather than actually get on with the story, which isn't a bad thing, but also it makes it a lot slower to read. So yeah, I, I've got so many books I wanna read at the moment, but I'm reading slower this month deliberately because I just am not remembering the plot of books anymore and that is not the best thing ever. I want to be able to actually remember the books that I've been reading. But yeah, um, so that's that's my current read. I have watched another film that I thought I would chat with you guys about. I watched Begin Again, which stars Keira Knightley, Mark Ruffalo, James Corden, Hayley Steinfeld. Stein? Stein? Steinfeld? That, that person. I can't remember what her last name is. But that was a musical kind of... It, it, there's music in it, but not. it's not like a musical, it's just there is music in it, but basically Kira Knightley is a struggling musician whose boyfriend breaks up with her after he becomes successful and Mark Ruffalo determines himself to make her an album and make her successful in her own right and James Corden is her friend and it was very nice and wholesome and lovely and all about music and about doing what you love and your passions and keeping that as your drive and keeping true to yourself and not selling out basically. I really enjoyed watching it. I am trying to rate the films I'm watching on IMDb now so I've got some kind of a log of what I've watched but I don't quite know because when I rate books I run them through Corpile which is a reviewing software that G from Book Roast 
manage to format into Excel. So that's useful because I rate them there and it kind of gives you a star rating. Whereas with films, I'm like, I don't know. I feel like I need to really, really unpick it to work out what I would give it out of a whole 10 stars possibility. I, it wasn't like, oh my God, mind blowing. Maybe it was like a six or a seven possibly. I'm always really, really generous with stuff. I never really give anything below like a five when I'm writing books, which I probably should because sometimes they're not that great and yet I still feel like I have to be kind because I'm rating someone's writing. When I say a five, I mean like out of 10 in the core pass system rather than like a five star. Obviously a five star is quite high. I never give anything below a two star. I would say two or one stars don't happen for me because I just DNF the book. So, and I guess if I'm not liking the film, I DNF the film. Although I find it really difficult to not finish films because they're, you know, it never lasts much longer than two hours and I always want to see where it goes in case it picks up but also just to fa the fact that I can say I've watched that film and be educated enough to talk about it because I finished it. Does that make any sort of sense? I'm going to go now because I'm going to go on a walk in my lunch break because I can't go after work because after work I have to immediately run to the hairdressers except drive but I have to go very quickly to the hairdressers so maybe the next time you see me I will have not awful hair. It's really limp today because I'm going to the hairdressers so I didn't really need to put much effort in with like product but yeah. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> oh my god why my Siri just went off on my watch. I swear every single vlog you're just gonna have me reacting to that scared the shit out of me. I did not expect that to happen. Okay gonna put my heart back in my chest now and go for a walk. Okay I'm back I did the walk thing that done ticked off and um more books came in the mail. Um, you guys are insane. Honestly, thank you all so much. Um, wow. This is all from like the little birthday, the big birthday wish list sharing thing I set up where everyone shared their wish list underneath. Wow, that's very exciting. I am going to be opening up presents next Wednesday for my birthday, but I want to show you that I've got some, some stacks indeed, so I'm gonna pop these downstairs in my current birthday pile. Okay, hair, hair is done. It is now Friday. I didn't show you my hair yesterday because the hairdresser didn't dry it the way I would normally dry it, whereas I've wet it again this morning and then scrunched it up to get the curl going a little bit. This side hasn't really done it as much as this side has, but my hair's been cut and dyed. Ah. I just, being in the hairdressers, like, they all had PPE on and I had a mask on and everything was cleaned down and stuff, so it was different, obviously, I didn't expect it not to be, but it felt like some kind of semblance of normal again, because I was just able to get my hair cut and dyed and I can get the copper woven back through it a little bit more, because it was definitely fading more to a blonde-ish tone rather than the coppery colour, so... I'm really pleased. It'll look better tomorrow when I've actually dried it, but this is my hair. Also super excited because today, being Friday, is my last day at work before I have a week off for my birthday. Boop boop. It was meant to be really, really, really nice weather next week, and now it's cloudy and rainy for like two days, and one of the days it's cloudy is my birthday, which isn't cool. Not cool. I'm also born in St. Swithin's Day, fun fact. If it rains on St. Swithin's Day in St. Swithin's Grave, which is in Winchester, conveniently where I went to uni, it will rain for 40 days and 40 nights apparently, so it's not allowed to rain on my birthday. As of birthdays past, it's rained on one birthday, so it literally isn't allowed to happen. It'll curse the entire country if it rains, so it's not cool. I don't really know what I'm gonna be doing next week. I am probably gonna do a little couple of adulting bits that I need to get done. Hopefully film some more videos for you guys, write some blog stuff. Basically have a week off from my day job and not from my blogging job, but that's cool because I like being ahead of myself and getting loads of stuff done. So I will try and relax as well, but if it's nice weather, that means I can go out in the sun, which would be awesome. I'm gonna go get a banana and read my book before I have to start work for the day. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello, I forgot to vlog this morning. Oops, it's 4.30 in the afternoon on Saturday and I completely forgot to vlog because I was driving to do some social distancing socialising. <laughs> I met up with two of my friends for the first time since lockdown started, which was really, really nice. It was relaxed, it was chilled. It was generally, it was busier than I expected it to be out, but also it's weird because on the one hand, it's probably too soon for it to get this busy, but also it's good that the economy is being able to get some money put back into it. But then there are spikes of coronavirus coming back up in certain areas within the UK, so I don't know, but it was nice to have some form of normality, even though there was still this social distancing and the slight worry that comes with that. But 
it felt really nice. I really enjoyed seeing friends and having a laugh and talking without it just being my family because it's only been me and my family for quite a few months now. Um, but that was really good. Someone's just started their motorbike outside. That's really helpful. Okay, I think they've gone. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, yes, it was just nice to have some normality back and to have a laugh and just, yeah, get back into socialising. I also stopped by Waitrose on the way home and picked up some sunflowers because they had them in for five pounds. So, sunflowers, yay! And I got my mum a plant because I'm excellent like that. I got Ava a kinder egg and I got my stepdad some weird crisp cracker thing that he's been craving for a while, so. <laughs> everyone got a treat and I just got some new earrings as well from Urban Outfitters. Shall I show you the new earrings? Hold on. I'm gonna try and be some fashion blogger now. Are you ready? Okay, here's the earrings. <laughs> These are the hoop with star decoration in gold. You can see the black lining here and the gold contrast frames really nicely. Did I sound like I know what I'm talking about? Yay, earrings, hoops. <laughs> Uh, they arrived from Urban Outfitters this morning, and yeah, that, ooh, oh, that was so high-pitched, yeah, <laughs> anyway, what am I doing? Anyway, right, okay, good, back on track. We are watching Lord of the Rings number two, Lord of the Rings and the Two Towers, with dinner tonight, because my sister enjoyed the first one so much last week that she wishes to watch the next one, so we're gonna have some make-your-own KFC, essentially, which is basically just kind of KFC chicken, but cooked in the oven at home or from a shop but actually I really like it and prefer it to KFC and then some crusty bread and things so it's all good I'm excited it shall be yum watching that and then doing absolutely sod all I would imagine and doing sod all tomorrow and then starting a very busy week of being off work on Monday so feeling good sorry I haven't really spoken to you much today I fully intended to take you along with me today and then I forgot <laughs> so whoops but I will talk to you guys later when we shall discuss the lack of reading I've done this week, but at the same time, the genuine enjoyment of reading I've had this week and the lack of pressure to read this week. But we'll also recap the films I've watched because I feel like that is what I wanna start talking about a bit more as well. So we'll do that later as well. I will catch up with you guys then. Okay, it's four hours later than when you last saw me. I have had dinner, sat outside in the sun for a little bit, and we are halfway through watching Lord of the Rings and the Two Towers. We've paused it to watch the rest tomorrow because it is my sister's bedtime. However, she did come out with some absolute crackers. Uh, I used to really, really fancy Legolas when I was a kid, and I had a full-length poster of him. I went to see the films at the cinema, and just, yeah, I really, really, really like Legolas. And the moment I absolutely love him the best is in the second film when the wargs come and attack the the group of riders from Rohan and the people from Rohan and Legolas is just on the edge of the hillside and he's just like pow, pow, when he's firing off his arrows and then Gimli comes past him on his horse and Legolas just sweeps himself onto the horse and it's just I still love that scene very much and Ava loved it too and completely freaked out and fangled so I think I uh I'm contributing to her enjoying Legolas quite a bit as well so yeah really enjoying watching that and she also made an absolute cracking remark because in that same bit Aragorn like goes over the edge of the cliff and she then said just completely silent and she then said I guess that's why he's called Aragorn she's eight and I'm like where where did this wit come from <laughs> excuse me so that's been my evening. <laughs> I also just rewatched a parody video that I watched years and years and years ago that was just hilarious. It's by this group of people that are called something like T Lord of Tarongs or something. And they basically just make funny edits of Lord of the Rings. Some of them are really crap, but some of them are really funny. And they made this one of Faramir when he's looking at a map and he's pointing to different places on the map and getting the locations wrong. It's hilarious. <laughs> I will link it down below if you're interested. My camera light's flashing at me. I'm gonna switch my battery. I'll be back. Okay, new battery, probably slightly different positioning. Anyway, yeah, so linking that video down below for you guys because it just cracks me up every time and I don't know why. I have read barely anything in terms of quantity of books, but I have read nearly all of The Deadly Education or A Deadly Education, completely forgotten what. This is, I don't know if you guys find this when you're reading a book digitally on a Kindle, but because I'm not looking at the title of the book every time I pick the book up, I tend to forget the order of the way the title's worded. Anyway, yeah, so, Reading that, enjoying it a lot. I've got about 10% left to go, so I'm really nearly finished. I'll probably finish it tonight or tomorrow morning, I would have thought. Very much enjoying it. I will give proper thoughts once I finish it, 
but I've just been kind of slowly reading because I've also been watching quite a lot of films this week. So what did I watch? I watched Tolkien, which was superb, would absolutely recommend it if you are into Lord of the Rings and clearly it's been a Lord of the Ringsy week, but would really, really recommend that if you are wanting to know a bit more about Tolkien's story. It's fabulously made, absolutely brilliant, really emotionally pr provocative in that sense and just very cleverly filmed as well. The connotations of the themes from Lord of the Rings popping through into this film. I, it's fantastic. It makes me want to read and learn so much about Tolkien. A couple of years ago on my birthday I went to a Tolkien exhibition in Oxford and just loved seeing everything about him and I think it's the only museum exhibition I've been to where I literally read every single thing that was there. It was amazing. It was just brilliant. I, Lord of the Rings has held a special place in my heart since I was about six so to learn more about the person that created that world is always very important to me. I also watched Begin Again which was like a musical-esque thing and liked it, wouldn't necessarily scream and shout about it but it was good and then yesterday I watched The Intern which is just I think becoming a favourite because something I said to my mum the other day was I'm trying to think of what my favourite films are because I feel like I've become out of touch with what is a favourite for me and she said well what's a film you would watch again and again? I thought well actually do you know what I would watch The Intern again and again and there's other films like that too but I picked that one out in my head so I watched that again yesterday and now I'm like yeah I think that one is definitely a favourite so that is just so feel good fantastic and just easy watching and then today we are watching Lord of the Rings and the Two Towers as I said so that is a four film week a one book week but I think I'm going to start wrapping up films in these vlogs because I would like to make my content a little bit more about the films I'm watching as well because I like that you guys seem to be enjoying it when I talk about it on Twitter and I've had a couple of people ask if I'll be including this in my vlogs so hopefully you like it <laughs> hopefully you've also enjoyed this varying style of vlog as well. I filmed a lot more b-roll which is the footage that's going on top of me speaking and before I introduce the day and things so I filmed more of that to make this a little bit more filmic and a little bit more interesting rather than you just looking at my face and I've tried a slightly different editing style with that as well, used some more music and things and I've just I've really enjoyed doing it like I enjoyed doing it anyway but I've really enjoyed filming slightly differently so hopefully you guys have enjoyed watching that <laughs> um, and let me know if you do enjoy watching it in that way and if you've noticed any of the changes they're probably just really subtle on your end but for me doing them I've just made new graphics and things and I'm drawing my thumbnails now. I'm just getting a little bit more artsy and creative with it a little bit at a time and falling a little bit more into what I was like when I very first started filmmaking when I was in the latter end of school in sixth form. Yeah let me know if you like it in the comments down below or if you've got any film recommendations for me as well. I will be doing more videos on film and TV in the future. I did do a TV recommendations video that's live today, so I'll pop that up here if you wanna check that out. It's my top 15 TV shows of all time, which was fun to film and edit as well. I really enjoyed that one. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you do like it, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. And as I said, comment down below any favorite films or recommendations or what you thought of this vlog. You can subscribe if you would like to see more of your content. And actually there's 3000 of you guys now. We're just like so many humans, so thank you guys so much. I know that like in the grand scheme of things there's people that have got millions of subscribers but 3,000 of you is absolutely amazing and I am so pleased because I used I did YouTube many many years ago and I barely got any views on any of my videos and I just thought are these views actually just me clicking on the video to check it's all like loading okay and it kind of got a bit disheartening because I ended up thinking I was my only viewer <laughs> but I, I don't do it for the views in that sense I do it because I like making videos but to know you guys are watching and enjoying what I'm saying as well means a lot to me so thank you so much for 3,000 of you being here and I hope I continue to make videos that you enjoy for now I hope you enjoy the 3D vlog and you've got next week to look forward to which will be really good because I have got the week off so I'm going to take you around with me with the exciting things I'm doing next week so yay thank you so much for watching guys keep smiling and stay positive <laughs>